guys welcome back to my channel my name is Amy and in my channel I talk about plants and my life and journey with my plants and the day is finally here that I'm showing you my newly built terrarium this is a project that I have been talking to you guys about for months and months I think since maybe last uh, December or November last year I've um, purchased the IKEA Rotsta uh, shelf and it's just been sitting there over Christmas and I just have been kind of thinking about it and planning around it for a really long time and talking to you guys about it. Um, so I just want to give credit to like where I got my inspirations from. So how it all got started was when I watched uh, my friend um, Plant with Rose or I'll put her um, YouTube name on the screen. She built a giant terrarium and it's so beautiful and so inspiring. And ever since I've seen her project, I had been wanting to build something like that. I've been looking to see how I could do it. But the terrarium that she has, the size that she has, it's just something that I couldn't house and also uh, am not able to afford. Um, I think she found a really good deal on maybe Marketplace or something. Um, so I had to think on a smaller scale. And then I came across Banji Plants. Um, his video of converting his Rotsta IKEA shelf into a terrarium. Um, and I was so, so inspired right after I watched his video and I watched it so many times. I purchased the shelf and I started to plan to build this thing. Um, basically, all the materials that I have purchased, I got it from the links that he provided. So I'm just gonna put his video in the description box below. And if you're interested in making something like this, then please go check out his video because I give him 100% of the credit. And in his video, he's made some uh, comments about how he would have done things differently. And I have implemented those um, suggestions as well. And it was really, really helpful. And um, yeah, I'm just so, so excited to show you guys this. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through a little bit of how I built it and then uh, do a little plant tour inside the terrarium. And uh, there are some things I didn't really film. I feel like a really bad YouTuber because there are a lot of things I feel like I could film and show you guys, but then I also just really wanna focus on the project so I really didn't put in the effort of like setting the camera up and like getting footage of the, the whole process. But I hope you have enough here to like see how it's done. And then again, please check out Benji's video. He has done a really, really good job um, show, walking you guys through how it's built. So I'm really lucky that my husband has like taken on the task of building pretty much all my shelves. He um, built this IKEA shelf uh, from scratch and my Mills bowl, my fabric war, he's built all of them. I think it just maybe stresses him out to watch me um, uh, go through the building process. So he, he's always taken that on um, kind of early in the morning. Sometimes I'll wake up and the shelf is already built. So that I didn't film that process. He, he built a shelf. And also I did spray a like a kind of rubber sealant uh, on the inside the shelf, on the metal part. It just kind of prevents the shelf from being rusted. So that part I also didn't film, but I will put the, that product in the link uh, down below as well so you will see and then so here we go I'm gonna show you the parts that I did film so like Benji didn't do this but he mentioned in his video that he w wish he had done this which is like siliconing like the the sides of the the shelf to really seal it so I got the silicone um, and it was my first time using it it smelled really bad I should have worn a mask it smelled like kind of like really, really strong vinegar. But anyway, so then I just took the silicone gun and then um, silicone all sides of the, the IKEA shelf. Okay, you're seeing me kind of struggling. I don't know if I'm using it right. I probably should have watched a little tutorial on how to work with silicone. I'm just watching my footage as I'm telling you guys, so then we're kind of looking at this uh, together. More silicone footage. Here, I think you got the idea. 
All right. So the one thing that I was kind of intimidated with is using the spray foam. I've never done this and I don't know how strong it will smell. I actually didn't smell like anything. And um, I don't know how much it's gonna like kind of get everywhere. So I was a little bit intimidated and I just wanted to give it a try and like foam the sides. But then it turned out to be like quite easy to use. And then once I started foaming, I was a little bit afraid, like if I stop using the spray bottle, what if the foam like solidifies in the little like gun, then I won't be able to use the rest of the bottle. So I kind of like, I wasn't planning on foaming the thing. And then I, once I got started, I just had to do, do it. And as you can see, like I also, um, so Benji mentioned this in his video too. Uh, he, what he did was he foamed the shelf and then he shaved it and then used silicone and then put the sheet moss on top, but then it didn't work really well. So he ended up having to anchor it, I think with wires, uh, the, the moss. So he suggested that to, before the foam dries to just like lay the sheet moss on top. This is what I am doing in my video. And that worked really well actually. Um, so then I just did, uh, like parts at a time, I will spray the foam, put the moss on, and then do the next part so that the um, I could put the moss on as the foam is really like so wet. Mm. Another thing that I, he did was he put pots underneath to create like height difference in the background of the shelf. And I decided to use the pot as well, but then leaving the, the top open so then I could also still put plants inside the pot. That worked out quite well for me. I was able to like fit some plants that are like a little bit trailing in the, like this um, fern into the pot. So I, I really, I really like that, that it worked out that way. And I kind of wish I had put a little bit more uh, pots in, but um, I didn't do a lot of planning. I just kind of like, like I mentioned, I wasn't planning on foaming the thing when I went ahead and did it. So. It just, everything was just kind of like last minute. Just, I just did it. Um, and also it's really, it was really surprising to me how little foam came out of one can. I bought six cans and it was kind of like barely enough. Um, yeah. Let's see. What else is happening? Oh, looking at the footage just stresses me out. It's just like so much mess everywhere. And then I'm like trying to not get foam on my hands. Yeah. But I'm really glad I did it. So another thing that I should mention is that um, when you're fo foaming the shelf, you should definitely like lay the, the side that you're foaming flat down because the foam doesn't stick to the surface really well. If it's standing up, even if it's like the side, it'll just kind of like fall off this way. So wherever you're foaming, you want it to be like lying down. So the foam will like, you know, sit, stay put. Um, yeah, so then, so this process is kind of a little bit of like, you have to wait a little bit. You foam one side and then you, you gotta wait for it to cure until you like flip the shelf and the other side to like foam the other side, wait for that to cure and then do the other side as well. Another mistake that I made and I didn't really show in this, um, in this, this uh, I didn't really film that part. It was really, really frustrating was that I had decided to um, foam all sides before I put in um, the last part, which is um, this glass part on the bottom to stop the soil from coming out. So this is just one of the shelving units that came with the shelf. But because I have foamed all the sides already, it was impossible to fit this, this thing in again. So I had to like, I thought about um, removing all the like doors so then I could put it in. But what I ended up doing was like shaving the foam down to a point where I was able to fit the shelf in and then like, touch up the foam with like moss and other stuff. So that was the only part that was super frustrating. And then, so for the bottom part, um, I mix uh, a lot of whatever I had in hand, on hand really, like cocoa husk chips, 
um, charcoal, which I think is really important because you can't really like flush this thing out. So you want something there that's like, that will help detoxify the, the environment. So the uh, charcoal is really important. And then I have like chunky perlite, and then I have like um, potting mix uh, that's already um, supposedly for um, uh, indoor plants, but I always add things to make it chunkier and airier too. Um, so yeah, I think those are the ingredients. So yeah, like uh, cocoa husk chips, charcoal, perlite, soil, and then I broke those foam into like bigger chunks, like smaller chunks, and then mixed it into the soil as well to help the aeration. I've seen like, I have seen this done when I purchase plants too. Um, I, I see like little foam bits in uh, some of the like soil mixtures and I think why not? I just, yeah, mixed it in, not waste it. hope that kind of gave you an idea of how I was how I made it and now we're just gonna go inside and take a look at the uh, plants inside I love um, I've, I've planted some like bigger plants in there but then I've also planted so many little cuttings it also feels kind of like a huge um, propagation box for me and I'm just like really excited to see how things grow in there um, yeah so let's go so the store actually doesn't like it kind of shuts on itself so I bought a piece of driftwood to hold it open I kind of like keeping it over here when I'm not holding a door open I think it looks quite cool all right here we go um let's start from the top in the corner I have my peperomia prostrata and I also planted a little uh, kodama it's a little forest spirit from the movie um, Princess Minoke um, they signify um, that a forest is being healthy. Um, if you watch a lot of the Ghibli Studio movies, there is a running theme of protecting nature and wildlife. And I really appreciate that. And I love what this little guy um, stands for. Um, so along the top here, which is really close to light, I have plants to plant more carnivorous plants up here. Um, and then I have some pinguiculas here flowering right now. And I feel like they really add like a little whimsical um, element to the grow tent. I love those little flowers. There's a little bit more pinguiculas uh, there. And then I have a little uh, white, uh, philodendron white princess cutting that I planted in there. And um, this is a Trescantia that my friend gifted me a cutting and it's like really, really fuzzy and very cute. Like as you can see, when we come closer, you'll really see like the little imperfections. You can see some of the foam here and there, but that's okay. I think it's gonna grow in. I have a little Hoya Tansania cutting here and a Hoya um, Serpents here. Who else is here? Oh, and then oh, I forgot this guy. I think this might be a White Knight. No, <laughs> Phil Phil and White Knight. Some more Penguinculas. A Hoya um, Obovada, whoops, Obovada Variegata there. And then I have a Syngonium here. This is a little orchid that I really like. It actually blushes a little bit when it's under more light, so I planted it a little bit higher up. And then on the side, this is there's actually a pot inside. And uh, on the side of this pot, I have a Duskidia um, hirsuta in there and another uh, cutting of the peperomia um, prostrata. And then let's see, here I recently found this variegated Boston fern, which I really, really love. And I think it just fits so well in here. I love that trailing, the way it, it trails, it just looks so pretty. And then because of the high humidity, it's been doing really well. It's like unfurling those little um, leaves. They're just so, so cute. Um, and the variegation is so pretty too. And then in the corner, I have some micans planted in there, some more Hoya cuttings. Um, and then I have this um, 
Apollonia Potra uh, planted in there as well. I hope that it roots and starts climbing. Um, and then this is one of my wish list plants actually. This is the Raphidophora something, I'll put the name on the screen. But as it grows, it should have like really cute fenestration on the leaves. Uh, hopefully it'll do that. Uh, and here I have a little Hoya cutting of Chinguinensis and then a Brentianum, uh, Philodendron Brentianum pot in there too. And then another little orchid. And I also decided to uh, put my Monstera obliqua Peruvian form in here, which I'm not sure if it's a right decision because it was doing really well in the grow tent, which was warm and humid. And I'm not really able to keep the temperature um, up in this terrarium because it's downstairs and there's not enough heat. Um, but hopefully it'll, it'll do okay and spring is just around the corner. I also have some jewel orchids planted here and there like throughout the terrarium. Um, here on this, I really, really love this piece of driftwood that I bought. Um, and I learned this method from Brad's greenhouse actually of mounting orchids with crazy glue. So that's what I did. I mounted the orchid on the wood and then uh, with crazy glue and then I crazy glue more sphagnum moss around to keep the moisture in. And I think that looks just so fantastic. Um, so then I did the same thing with Hoya. This is Kamali, I think. Um, and then I have another little forest spirit here looking super romantic with his little purple flower and then some more pinguiculas on, on here and then some more pinguiculas on the top on this piece of wood and then more jewel orchids. Yeah, and, and more pinguiculas. I guess I just love them so much. Um, and then Underneath, I actually just planted this in here yesterday, the Singonia mojito. Yeah, I think it looks super beautiful in this element, in this like terrarium setting. I also have some life, like this is an air plant, I think. And I just cut some strings from the big plant that I have and hung it here. This is a Philanopsis. No, no, this is some type of orchid. I forget the name. Um, I have a couple like of these guys, one here and then another one in here. I love this, the, the variegation on these leaves is so pretty. I should also mention that throughout as I was foaming the um, background, I would also foam in these like cord barks here and there, thinking that I would it would add some texture, but I could also um, be adding like different orchids or Hoyas onto these guys as well. A field engine silver sword cutting in here. Um, down below, on this, this side of the wall, let's see. We have another little guy hidden in there. Oh, also I should mention they um, glow in the dark, which is so cute. Wolfie really, really loves them. Um, this is the variegated uh, heteracium, like a Harley philodendron that I have. Um, so hopefully they, this one will do well in here too. Uh, this one, I don't remember the name, Sonola or something. Very pretty. And then I have um, some Cebu Blue Potho cutting in there too. And this is, uh, I think, Silver Lady Skin Dapsis cutting. And then a little Jewel Orchid hiding in there again. Um, let's see. And then this is one of my favorite Skin Dapsis. Uh, this, I think, Silver Hero, this is the cutting. Um, and then I moved the sad cutting of Monstera uh, at the Sony Eye in here. Hopefully it'll take root in here in this high humidity setting. And then I think this is the Raphidophora Hei 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 It's kind of like climbing all the way up here, but it's not getting a lot of light in this spot, so I'm not sure how it will do. Um, and then I potted my, sorry, it's so messy, um, Calathea Yellow Fusion in here as well. Um, 
some more Hoyas, a Hoya Bella, and another Hoya that just wasn't rooting anywhere, so I kind of just put it in here, thinking it's like a prop box. Hopefully it'll start rooting. Some Mikans cutting in here, um, a Piper in here, one of the little guys that came back from death that I told you guys about. It's working on a new leaf, hopefully. Can you see? It's so hard to see. Uh, okay, so here we are looking at our first begonia, which is melting. Um, so Benji mentioned this in his video that the begonias, like when they first come in, they the a few leaves will melt and then the new leaves come out better in this environment. And that's what I'm hoping would happen. But I'm also prepared for them to just like die on me. Like this is one of my favorite begonias, the, the jello, and it's definitely looking really, really rough. But there is a still like a good leaf in there. Um, so in retrospect, I think I probably should have just introduced them into the terraria in their cups and slowly plant them in instead of just like planting them in, um, expecting them to just do okay. See like this guy is, has some melting leaves as well. Um, and then there's some more melting leaves here. But um, yeah, I'm still staying hopeful because not all the leaves have melted and they are, I don't know, I feel like I trust that they could be resilient and come back. Um, another syngonium, this is a confetti. So pretty, I love it. And then I have my, some more syngoniums back here. Uh, another begonia, this is the snow cap cutting that I took. Ooh, I also have quite a few like, um, Philodendron, Burl Marks, um, Fantasy cutting hidden in here. Um, hopefully they'll take root and grow. This is, I forget what's the name. I have sphagnum moss on it, because like, they're still not like settling in. So a lot of sphagnum moss is just falling off. And then some Photonias here. I love that pop of pink. Um, yeah, you know, you guys, I feel like I have planted so many little plants and cuttings in here that it will be it will take forever to go through them and they're kind of just settling themselves in anyways um, one thing that i forgot to mention is that i also added some weather stripping um, tape in on the doors and on the sides to seal in even more humidity and one last thing that i forgot to mention is that i have painted the, why is it not focusing? The size of the shell, black, because it was clear before, right? Then you could have seen the, like the foam on the side. So I just painted both sides black. Jordan thinks I should paint it one more time, but I'm kind of like, I think it's good enough. I try to spray this about once a day and that should be enough, but the humidity stays pretty high in here around 99. But that's also because the temperature is low. If it's the temperature is around like hovering at around 20 right now or 19 actually. And if it goes a little bit higher, like if it gets warmer in there and I think the humidity will drop. Anyway, so I'm spraying this every day, but I think I could get away with spraying it maybe every other day. And you guys know I'm gonna be going away. So I'm gonna ask Tony, my brother, who's going to be house-sitting to um, spray this for me maybe every other day. And then my, my, my friend Shannon is going to come and help me water my other plants. So yeah, guys, I really hope you enjoy that little tour of the terrarium. I really, really love having it in my home. It really, like, I could just sit there and watch it all day long. It feels like a living piece of art. Um, and like building it was quite really pleasurable too. It feels like it's really like, it's very, um, tech, I have to like feel and then I have to compose it. And then like choosing what plants, what color, where to put them is, yeah, it feels kind of like making a, a painting with plants and it, that was so much fun. And then also the idea of how it's going to continue to evolve and grow and change. That aspect of it is really, really, um, I just really love that. 
you know, it's super inspiring. It's going to grow with me. It's going to change. And it's going to be a little ecosystem in there by, with, within itself. And, and I love the idea of that. I have already introduced some springtails into the terrarium, which uh, they will help me um, take care of decaying um, plant matters. And this week, I'm also going to be picking up some isopods to put in there too, to also like do, the, do that kind of job. And also, as I, I guess they poop and live in there, they'll provide some nutrients for the plants and the terrarium as well. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with this and I'm gonna continue to tinkle with it, improve it, put more plants in it. And I will definitely show you more updates uh, about it later on as well. So I hope you like it. Please leave in a comment, let me know uh, what you think and uh, I will see you guys soon again. Bye.